Hello, hello, family. Tammy Lynn here with a very encouraging word from the Lord. The Lord says, do not fear. He says, keep believing. He is about to put his hands on you and bring you out of that situation, bring you out of that dead looking situation. He is about to put his hands on that situation and turn everything around. He is about to put his hands on that situation and bring life into that dead situation. Glory, hallelujah. Family, I love this word from the Lord. Oh my goodness. It is going to encourage you. Get the word of God out. Deep is calling unto deep. Please turn to Mark 5. We're going to read 35 through 42. I love, love, love this word from the Lord. It is so encouraging even to my own self. This word came to me last night as I was uh, talking to him. Um, actually, to be really honest, I was crying out to him. <laughs> Any of you ever do that? You cry out to him. And as I was crying out to him, I began to say, put your hand on me. Put your hand on that situation and I am telling you I was just weeping but as I was weeping and I was telling him to put his hands on me to put his hands on that situation he said he's going to do it and as he said he's going to do it he said to tell you he's going to do it for you too I love it whenever I'm talking to him about me and he's dealing with me but then he begins to speak about his people because the best uh, way for me to get my mind off myself is to get my mind on everybody else. So last night I knew that the Lord was going to put his hand on our situations. Glory, hallelujah. And then this morning I was in worship and just praising him. I actually have forgotten about the conversation last night. You know, weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Glory, hallelujah. So here I am. I'm in worship. I'm listening to this song, Jehovah Rapha. It is one of my uh, favorite songs. He is my healer. He has healed me. He is still healing some situations in my life. Glory, hallelujah. So I am just praising Jehovah Rapha and just thanking him. And then I had this moment that it was just really intense. I could feel his presence and I was listening to the worship song on my phone and I had a moment in worship that I'm doing this and I went to do this as I was looking down at my phone, not reaching for my phone. I had this deep hunger in me to have the hand of Yeshua for him to touch my hand and as I'm looking down at my phone because my my soul is like take my hand I want to hold your hand and right when I had did that action and I'm looking at my phone it was at the same time that there was a scene in the video in which Yeshua reached out his hand to the woman with the issue of blood oh my goodness and then I remembered the conversation about his hand last night and so I knew that at some point I was going to come tell you he was going to put his hand on you. He was going to put his hand on that situation. So I come to sit down to get ready to release some other uh, messages. And I had gra gra grabbed my Passions translation because I was wanting to read um, a scripture out of that that he had led me to yesterday morning to deliver to you all. And when I pulled my Passions translation over, it had opened up. I wasn't paying attention to where it opened up, so I go to pick it up because I am going to turn over to Psalms 57, which he led me to yesterday morning for you all, for us all. Um, but right when I was about to turn it there, I felt a pause. And I knew that I was just to look. So I looked down, and sure enough, it was on Mark 5. I knew the Holy Spirit was wanting to minister. So I began to read. And lo and behold, if he didn't give me the confirming scripture that goes with the conversation last night that he and I was having and that he said he was going to do for us as well as this morning in praise and worship. So I just love this. Again, he says, do not fear. Keep believing. He's putting his hands 
on you. He's putting his hands on that situation and life is coming into it. New beginnings is coming into it. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So, okay, I'm reading out of the Passions uh, translations translation for those of you who don't like the passions translation and you want to judge people because of the different versions that they are reading please just read your translation and let the holy spirit speak to you and don't let judgment of me get in the way of you hearing the lord and receiving what the lord has to say to you today i go by ever how he leads me i have so many different versions and so when he speaks to me through a certain one, then I obey that and I release it in that. So here we are, the Passions Translation, Mark 5, beginning in verse 35. This is um, a, a, a scene, a time, a situation that happens right after Jesus immediately heals the woman with the issue of blood. So 35, and before he had finished speaking, People arrived from Jairus' house and pushed through the crowd to give Jairus the news. There's no need to trouble the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. How many of you have had some voices in your ears telling you you need to move on? It's not going to happen. You need to accept it. Come on, I know I'm talking to somebody. Here, Jairus has some voices in his ears telling him to give up, lose hope, it's over, his daughter is dead, but Jesus refused, Jesus is refusing to allow you to remain in that situation, he is refusing to allow you to remain in captivity to that which the enemy has brought against you, oppressing you, trying to defeat you and discourage you, attack your faith, trying to get you so tired, to get you so weary that you just give up. You give up on the promise. You give up on hope of things ever turning around. You give up on Jesus. But Jesus refuses to give up. So, but Jesus refused to listen. You've got to refuse to listen to the naysayers. You've got to refuse to listen to the mockers. You've got to refuse to listen to those who are not speaking the language of God. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for this word. To what they were told and said to the Jewish official, don't yield to fear. He is saying, don't yield to to fear. Do not look at the situation. Do not listen to what they are telling you. Oh my goodness, this is some good stuff. He says all you need to do is keep on believing. That's all you need to do. I know you're in a comfortable place right now. You're in a comfortable situation right now. I know that that which you have been facing has looked dead. Perhaps it has been dead. Perhaps it's that seed that fell into the ground that was buried that died so that it can come forth and produce much more fruit. I am telling you, keep on believing. Keep on believing what the Lord had spoken to you. Keep on, keep on, keep on, he says. Glory, hallelujah. So they left for his home. But Jesus didn't allow anyone to go with them except Peter and the two brothers, Jacob and John. Not everybody needs to go with you. Not everybody needs to be around you. Not everybody can speak into your life. Not everybody needs to even be praying for you. He showed me the other day some people that have been praying for me, and he says, you need to start praying for them because they're praying out of their own agenda. They're praying out of their own opinions. They're not praying in alignment with the will of God in regards to a particular situation that is going on in my life. So again, not everybody can go or with you or be around you or know about what you are going through. Verse 38, when they arrived at the home of the synagogue ruler, they encountered a noisy uproar among the people, for they were all weeping and welling. Upon entering the home, Jesus said to them, Why all this grief and weeping? Don't you know the girl is not dead, but merely asleep? 
see, Jesus sees the other side of everything. We've got to come up higher in our faith and begin to see it through the eyes of our Lord and Savior. When we see it through his eyes, then we know that it's actually not dead. It's just in the ground buried. He's watering it. He's doing some stuff with it. It's in a dark place because he has it hidden. So the enemy can't see what is going on. So the enemy can't see what he is doing. When you have the word of God in you, then this is his truth that will set you free. Free from the lies of the enemy. The lies that the enemy is trying to feed you about your situation, about what you are going through, about what is going on with your body, with your marriage, with your family, with your children, with your finances. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. So he says, don't you know the girl is not dead, but merely sleeping. Things are not always what they appear to be. Then everyone began to ridicule and make fun of him, but he threw them outside. Some of you need to throw some people outside. You need to get them out. You're holding on to them because you are so desperate for somebody to validate what you know the Lord has already spoken to you. But they are robbing you of your peace. They are robbing you of your joy. They are attacking your faith. They're not coming into agreement with with you agreement with you for the very thing that is the will of God in your life for you so again some of you need to throw someone out or you need to throw them out I love this then he took the child's father and mother and his three disciples and went into the room where the girl was laying. He says to stay in the room. I know you feel alone. I know you feel abandoned. I know you feel like nobody understands you, that nobody cares, that nobody's praying for you, nobody's believing for the best outcome for you. But he says just stay in the room. He is in the room with you. Glory hallelujah hallelujah thank you father god he says stay in the room he has entered the room yeshua has entered the room who am i talking to right there where you're at if you're listening to this while you're driving in your car i am seeing him right there with you in the car he said he is right there he has entered into the situation he is in the atmosphere glory hallelujah right there in your home he has entered into your living room. He has entered into your bedroom. He has entered into your kitchen right there where you're sitting at your kitchen table. He has entered in. He says just stay in the room. You're not alone. He is with you and everything is under control and it's going to work out for your good. Glory. Hallelujah. And I love this. Verse 41. He tenderly clasped the child's hand in his and said to her in Aramaic, Talithia kum, which means little girl, wake up from the sleep of death instantly and he's been saying we are in a season in which he is immediately going to be fulfilling his word in an instant in a blink of an eye you are going to go from morning to shouting with tears of too good to be true. You're not just going to be singing hallelujah. You're going to be weeping. He's been showing me that what he is doing in the lives of his people that have gone through some stuff and they have been in some long seasons of wait and it has not been easy. He says when he does what only he can do, it is going to cause his people to weep. So you are going to go out into the highways and the by ways weeping with tears of joy singing look what the Lord has done glory hallelujah so instantly the 12 year old girl sat up stood to her feet and started walking around the room everyone was overcome with astonishment and see this miracle again you're going to be overcome with the goodness of the Lord others are going to see this miracle 
those who did not believe that it could turn around for you those that did not believe you were going to come up out of that situation those who were not believing the best for you they are going to see Yeshua do what only he can do and they are going to be astonished it's all been a setup glory hallelujah God does not waste anything your weight has not been in vain your tears have not been in vain he's gathered every one of those tears glory hallelujah thank you father god so family he says do not fear keep believing he's putting his hands on you he's putting his hands on that situation and life is coming into it he's doing a new thing he's bringing forth that which you thought and others thought too was dead glory hallelujah thank you father god for this word i thank you for those who have ears to hear you and i thank you yeshua that you are going to confirm this word in the lives of your people and that you are going to manifest this word in the lives of your people and they shall come forth testifying of your faithfulness giving you all the praise honor and glory for you are worthy in Jesus name glory hallelujah amen family continue to stand firm on the word of God stay strong in your faith I will talk to you all soon shalom